Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I can't thank you enough for the support. We've absolutely churned out subs. So it's nice to know that you're enjoying the draft and off-season content. If you want to become a member, go a step further, support the ch channel financially. The link is in the description to do that. Costs a cup of coffee a month. Check that out. Check that out, and you get to kick back with me on private live streams. We'll be doing one just post draft once all the hustle and bustle is that, and we do some giveaways and stuff like that. Bit of FIFA content for you uh, people out there. And we start with none other than the exciting best first picks in this year's draft. So what this is, is the dream target. So that could be a faller, basically something that is... Going to be touch and go, should you get it. And we're going to do all eight in clubs. So the first one we're going to start with is Adelaide. And we've picked Mr. Connor O'Sullivan. Connor O'Sullivan, for me, obviously the best key position defender in the draft, as it were. We know they have been heavily linked with him. Will he get to what's scheduled to be about pick 12 with the pick matches? Could even be more if someone goes way too early. It's going to require a little bit of nuance to get there, but I feel like Adelaide in a dream world would love to secure this if they could pre-select someone um, outside of the top three. He would definitely be in the conversation. A, an incredible footballer, smooth mover, great rebound type player, good interceptor, strong defensively. Feel like he suits the bill for the Crows. Brisbane, I feel like Brisbane are the most balanced list in the AFL. So I feel like they go into this draft with next to nothing picks, really. Their first pick, in reality, is pick 30. They're going to sit back. But I think that with the young forwards they've got, um, like a, well, I say Hitwood's young. He's, he's mid-age, isn't he? He's coming up to mid-age. But I feel like a key forward is probably where they'd look, particularly the key position thing. And I feel like the best player that is likely to slide with an element of not being stupid, like saying someone like Jed Walter or someone, or Nate Caddy, is Archer Reed. I think that he's around that pick. I do believe he'll be picked way before that. But I think in an ideal world, they would love Archer Reed to come in. Learning off Danaher, learning off Hitwood, working that system. I feel like that that's good. They've got some players coming through in the next couple of years, he's got to be said. I mean, there is one guy there, Tom Gillett, who will be in the NGA next year. Um, but do you bite the bullet now? Um, because have you got that young key position talent? Archer Reed, I feel like, suits the bill for Brisbane. It might be a surprise, this, but I feel like Lance Collard is a top 20 player who is sliding every day. And, and I feel like people might say this to me, Pom, what about other positions? I feel like Cow and C Brisbane, I feel like, where they've got a really balanced squad, Carlton have got a really balanced 25. And I think the one thing that holds Carlton back is goal-kicking mids and output from their smalls. And I feel like when we've gone with small Carlton and what they've looked at, they've really gone with a set mantra of the same type of player that is astute defensively, but also astute and borderline, I'd say, just ticks in every boxes. Collard books the trend. He is a pure out-and-out -out player that is an expert crummer and a guy that is looking to finish what everyone else starts. And I feel like a player like this who slides, that's what Carlton's first pick will be, a player that everyone else has made a mistake. So Lons Callard will be a player that I suspect Carlton list managers will be hoping slides. Collingwood, Colton Thulstrup. Now, I know you'll be saying to me, but Pommy, we went out and got Lockie Schultz. Okay, cool. Thorstrop is a player that is a top 20 player as well. See, Collard, the fact that the AFL this year has gone on some kind of like mission spree to copy and paste the same type of player in the top 10 is kind of laughable. And Colton bucks the trend. It's good he's getting some late raps, but I feel like Collingwood would love this player. And I feel like there is a point in time when you're at a peak, particularly around Collingwood, you take best player. Because I don't think there's a dire need. And I feel like the needs that Collingwood have at this pick are too early to take. So you're left with an option of, do you fill your need probably too early and then help other sides out get better? Do you trade down and improve your hand? 
or do you take the best player available? And Tholstrop is a Collingwood player reincarnated. He's ready to go year one and an X factor. And I feel like that's the move to make. Essendon are really picky to look at because do they need more outside midfielders where everyone's linking them? I don't feel they do. I feel like Nate Caddy is where they're at. And I don't think he'll slide to their position, but I feel like Nate Caddy would be the dream acquisition. Uh, a, a marauding, goal-kicking, mid-sized forward that can play the tall position, can play the small, can be that conduit player. I feel like Nate Caddy is, for me, the most logical. You could maybe make an argument at Conor O'Sullivan, but they have got a lot of young players there. Do you know what I mean? They've got a lot of young talent there. I feel like they've also bid on that with Zerk Thatcher and players like that. They've, they've tried to fix that hole. I feel like forward of the ground is their weakness, their primary weakness. I feel like Nate Caddy would be a dream at Tuller Marine. Up next, Fremantle. I think Lance Collard, it, it, he, it's dependent on who you believe, he's sliding. I have no idea why. I feel like it's ridiculous. You've got to, at some point, someone's got to take the punt. I feel like Lance Collard instantly replaces Lockie Schultz and a bit more. And I feel like they really do lack some potency in the forward half of the ground. I feel like that has to be a primary focus, but with the picks Fremantle have, good luck finding that, if you know what I mean. So I feel like they'll be doing that. GWS, the wizard. I feel like GWS, when they pick players, they pick players with excitement factor in mind. I feel like that in the last couple of years, they've gone with a more stable Method. I feel like now it's time to return to that. And Nicky Watson, if he's there, lapped up. What an absolute player and a player that I feel is an excitement machine. And to suit the GWS style of play, I think pairing him and Toby Green. Ooh. Ooh. Geelong, Riley Saunders, I feel like he'd be a dream. And dependent, again, he's another player that was highly touted six months ago and again seems to have been forgotten about and he is if ever there was a Geelong player Riley is that he is good at everything and I feel like Geelong would lap up a player of Riley's elk gold course they're linked to him anyway but Jed Walter I feel like if you can go into a draft and get the best key forward in there who is a generational talent which isn't talked about enough that's a huge dub is it not is it not a huge dub? And I feel like Jed Walter, they're going to get him anyway. They're one of the few teams here that are guaranteed to get what would their dream target would be. I feel like that's it. You could maybe throw Harley Reid in there, but come on, we've got to have some elements of realms of reality, haven't we? Hawthorne, I feel like Zane Dersma is the thing they lack. Now, I have some people have taken my Zane Dersma criticism to another level. I, I don't not like the guy. I think he's great, but I feel like See Harley Reid, right? I feel like when people look at the draft, right? Harley Reid is great if you've got a team that's ready to go. Do you know what I mean? A team that's ready to go. And what I mean by that is see Dustin Martin. Every player like Zane Dersma, like that, are linked to like these Dustin Martin types. Um, Zane Dersma, do you know what I mean? They're, they're linked with these players who are just mythical to me. Do you know what I mean? Mythical type players. And it always makes me laugh, in my opinion, because I'm like, look at look at Dusty when he was at a poor club. People were calling him a disappointment. Look at Cam Rayner when he first got drafted. But if you've built your midfield right, you're getting the ball in there. And I feel like Hawthorne have nailed that. Avenue. Feel like Hawthorne have the best list management of a rebuild that I've seen in 10 years. Feel like they've nailed it. And I feel like Zane Dersma's the accompaniment piece. You could put Harley Reid in here as well if you wanted to. But I feel like Zane Dersma's skill sets, I feel like people really overrate the guy in the terms that, and I don't mean that nastily, I feel like when people talk about Zane Dersma, they, they think that this guy's going to come in and kick 50 goals and change lives. The true hard facts of the matter is Zane Dersma is an incredible, incredible talent who will be incredibly good. But if you are in the business of expecting someone to turn you from pants to good in one year, Zane Dersma isn't that player. Like, isn't that player at all? Isn't that player at all? And I feel like 
they put way too much pressure on him. And I love Zane Dersma. I think he's an incredibly, incredibly talented footballer who has clean hands, who has all the facets to be a forward, to even flirt back in the midfield. I feel like he's an incredible footballer, but I feel like the team that wants him, I feel like North still got spots that they need to fill. Zane Dersma is that accompaniment piece. They've built the cake, put the icing on. Melbourne. Now, I feel like Melbourne, if Dan Curtin, if everyone's jumped off the Dan Curtin train because they've bought into he's a midfielder, well, I mean, that's the AFL media's stupidity and everyone else's. I feel like Dan Curtin, as what he does, in my opinion, the most important position in the AFL is that guy that's intercepting from the third position. Also, the ability to play in the moments, and he's a moment player, incredibly strong in the air, incredibly composed, 197, 95 kegs. How this person isn't a stone wall top five pick is beyond me. And I feel like if he does slide, Melbourne are going to be like, fantastic, brilliant. This suits what we do. Hit the ball high in the air, get the ball going. Dan Curtin, brilliant. We've got He's going to be learning off the best player that does this for maybe the last 10 years and Stephen May. I think if he slides to this position, they will be lapping it up and with laughing at the other teams. Up next is North Melbourne. See why I said you should avoid players like Harley Reid and stuff like that. If you are doing it right. Now, I'm not saying Harley Reid doesn't pick one he is and you've got to take him. But I'm saying if you had a dream, you want to build your pieces. Colby McKercher is in that ilk of you build a midfield around him, he's going to find the ball and give it to players that can play. And you get that. For me, that's the first thing you draft if you're doing a rebuild. The first thing you do is who is my player that when we're shit, but then when we're good, he's going to help us out. Colby McKercher is, for me, the most ticks in a box player in this draft. Absolute stone wall. I have never been more sure of anything that this guy is the first pick at North Melbourne. It has to be. He is so well-rounded. He is why I've been pushing if West Coast trade. They've got to go two and three because they can also do this. North can nail the draft. And for me, they nail the draft. Any combination of these two picks, when people say, what about Zane Dersmer and Dan Curtin? What about Nick Watson and Zane Dersmer? Stuff like that. I've seen all sorts of things thrown around. The only way it's a success is Colby McCurtry is one of the picks. Because he's a jet. Can't speak of him highly enough. One of my favourite players, if not the favourite in the draft. Port Adelaide are so far back that they are relying on eight, 17 other clubs to start playing Pac-Man for them to do it. But Joe Frazier is one player that has been totally forgotten about. And I feel like with them losing Xavier Dersma, I feel like there's an option here for a mid outside mid who has got scope to play other positions. We know that Josh Sin is being, he's going to come back from injury. So where is he going to play? They've tried all sorts of players here. I feel like Joel Frazier is that Port Adelaide type pick late where they turn him into something good. Richmond, they'll be hoping on a key forward as well. They've lost old Rewalt. I feel like the next logical player is this guy. And I'm a big fan, a big fan of this guy, to be honest. I feel like he is an incredibly, incredibly skillful player and one that I'm really excited about seeing in this system. He's a player that, for me, really bugs the trend. And when you're working with with calling, with, with, with the players you've got, I feel like he, he suits it. Imagine him working with Tom Lynch. I feel like it's a real sensible system to have. And I feel like this is the way that they'll go. And they'll be really hoping that this guy fe- f- falls down to that. It's going to be hard because I feel like this guy is not being talked about by the media, but I feel like the media are wrong. I feel like the AFL clubs do know about him and will be desperately looking at him. An incredibly talented footballer and one that I'm really looking forward to seeing display his wares in the AFL and will be a really solid, solid acquisition for any club that comes along, do you know what I mean? Any club that comes along, it's going to be an interesting one. Up next, St. Kilda. And St. Kilda and Sydney have the same player, James Leake. I feel like that this is a player that they will desperately be looking for. I feel like that this is going to be a very important 
acquisition that both clubs will probably be looking at this position. James League for St Kilda, I feel like, suits what they're looking for. They're looking for a rebounding player. I feel like they're looking for... They've got real good players all over their position. I feel like it's a sensible, a sensible acquisition that they go best available. And I feel like James League is the most likely slider there that has an element of risk. And for Sydney, I feel like probably the only position they have massive depth, but I feel like the only position that they could probably improve is getting that Dane Rampy type replacement. And I feel like James Leake, they've been linked with just about everyone who plays that type of role, Hardeman, things like that. I feel like James Leake, if he slides to Sydney as well, they'll be quids in. Harley Reid, obviously for the Eagles. Now see it, I feel like there's two options when you're doing list management. I feel like you've got to either find the superstar you build around and you plan for 10 years, which Harley Reid, I suspect the Eagles have the system to do that. Or you cement your spot and trade it out for picks. I feel like Harley Reid has to go there. Has to go there because he's that good. You can't really trade it away. And it'll be one of them cases. See Sam Walsh, see Nick Dacos. If he was a free-for-all, that you'd probably be heavily criticised if you did that. And Harley Reid, for me, he makes sense. You could have Colby McHurcher if you wanted to go more safe. I'm more of a safe list builder if I was doing list management. And for me, the dogs, Nick Watson, I feel like they've never replaced Josh Dunkley. I feel like they never have. And I feel like Nick Watson has just suddenly been forgotten about because we've got so much Zane Dersma hype. Harley Reid has been completely hyped to an inch of his life, and rightly so. I feel like this kid here is the missing jigsaw piece. The missing jigsaw piece. And he would be a player with his small forward craft. I feel like it allows them to start moving players a little bit further back behind the ball. I feel like Watson in that forward line, with the tolls that they've got, suddenly they've built a real fearsome, fearsome. And I can see Nicky Watson having that ability to swing down into the midfield as time goes on. But I feel like he's a great player. There they are. Let me know who your dream target is. Try and make it a little bit unlikely. Let's have a conversation of if they slide and I could manipulate the draft. Let me know in the comments. I'll be back tomorrow with the live mock draft. Much love, everyone. See you soon. Rolling up, Uber, black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's hella bad.